by popular demand all of you wanted to see this game <laughs> vaibhav sethia versus sumit sorav where sumit plays a tremendous end game so let's have a look at this game it happened in the 6th round of comedians on board all stars powered by newton school and <clears throat> Vaibhav opened the game with 1b3. Now this is an opening that he has learned from b adiban. d5, bishop b2, knight to c6, e3, e5. Very good play by Sumit capturing the center. And here it is important for black to realize that the knight is pinned so the e5 pawn is hanging. He should have just played bishop d6 and defended the pawn. However, Sumit very quickly played bishop d7 and after takes takes he lost the pawn on e5. This already was good enough damage done but he went ahead and played bishop d6 which meant that he was going to lose another pawn not just a pawn but also the rook. Well we thought that resignation was incoming here <laughs> but Sumit is a fighter. He went queen to g5 like this move hitting the bishop and also the pawn so takes or takes the rook queen takes and now this rook is hanging so you really want to defend it and you play queen to f3 white black has only one move to kind of stay in the game d4 black has only one move takes takes and now the rook is hanging you can't do much but vaibo took another pawn and now if you see he's two pawns up a rook is recovered and here he played the move f3 very good move actually uh, the point is that after bishop takes h2 comes a very interesting move i think it's very difficult for players at this level even i think it would be difficult for strong players to find this move so i'd like you to think a bit because the knight is hanging and if the knight moves then the pawn is one and the bishops uh, the bishop which was trapped on h1 can come out so here the winning move king f2 was played by Vaibo, which was not the best the best move is knight to c3 wow what a move the point being that after bishop g1 comes king e2 and you are for the time being pawned uh, piece down but this is hanging and this is hanging so you can't save like it's kind of trapped so if you try to save this guy then Rook h1 and next move h7 hangs and uh, white is simply winning. So knight c3 was strong but king f2 was a was a decent move. Here I was expecting Sumit to play bishop g1 because then I think Vaibhav would have taken and after bishop f3 well the position is slightly better for white but now it's equal pawns and could be that black can survive but once again the best move here surprisingly is king e2 and after bishop h2 trying to get away bishop g2 king f2 <laughs> bishop h3 rook h2 these two bishops like they cannot come out and eventually you lose a piece okay so king f2 uh, bd6 was not a good move at all if you look at it knight h3 c5 and here uh, Vaibhav was very angry with himself that he didn't play bishop b2 because next move he'll go knight c3 and win an entire piece. He went bishop c3 and an excellent move by Sumit was c4. Actually uh, it also loses. I mean you can just take here, do whatever. But he realized that Vaibhav wants to take this uh, <laughs> bishop and so he will play his knight here. And so he tried to control this knight. So go ahead. So knight a3. Uh, bishop takes a3. It was a peace blunder and really quite a horrible one by uh, Vaibhav. But still he's totally winning because he is a pawn up and has a great position. Rook g7 takes takes knight d5. And here it was important to save this bishop. However, Vaibhav was not in the best frame of mind. He gave up the bishop on c3, then came bishop b2, knight f4, bishop c3, hits the rook, and here rook g2 was bad. I mean, you, you take this, then go here, and then king f1. Yes, he'll take here, then take here. I mean, the position becomes very complicated, but this is how he should have played. He played rook g2, and we reached this endgame with, maybe king takes was better, but with knight versus bishop 
and the knight's worst enemies are the rook pawns and black has two rook pawns here it's very interesting to see how sumit played first activate your king in the end game very important bringing it up then putting the bishop here maybe bishop e5 was better you know put the bishop here perhaps okay bishop e5 knight f4 he hits the knight knight h3 and now pushes the rook pawn how did sumit know that he has to push this pawn and not this well it's a passed pawn and he decided to push it knight g5 and a good move h4 because if vaibhav takes here h3 h2 h1 is a queen so knight h3 back and here uh, now it's the principle of two weaknesses so here this knight is kind of stuck to this pawn so you need to create a passer on this side of the board so that the king will be stuck here once you do that then the black king can somehow find a way to go inside and win the game that's how you should plan it but sumit's execution was not correct he played b5 and here white has a powerful move to you know make black's task very difficult what is that move kudos if you found the move b4 because now a5 b a bishop a5 does not create a passed pawn because this pawn stops the pawn so therefore it was important to start with a5 here by sumit and then b5 and then a4 that's how it would have been good but b5 vaibho was not alert he played f4 a5 good move uh, e4 a4 king c3 king b5 good move bishop b6 i liked how sumit figured his way out through this entire thing f6 knight f3 h3 h2 he won the uh, knight here and then he gave up this pawn at the right time he could have kept this pawn like you know at this point he could have played bishop d6 and then king c3 and won but he went king c3 which is also good enough and then eventually he went on to win this game by you know queening his pawn yeah good end game technique and it was a checkmate beautiful uh, game and here the most important thing to understand in this entire end game after rook takes h g2 like the rooks were exchanged at a certain point here is that a bishop is very very powerful when you have pawns on both sides of the board while if the pawns are on one side of the board the knight is stronger and sumit proved it by excellent play and although his opening play and middle game play weren't the best he still showed amazing amazing end game play and for that he credited nikhilesh jain in the video his coach who had trained him for 20 days or so during cob3 nikhilesh is a very very hard working teacher and he runs hindi chess base india so i'm going to put the link of hindi chess base india uh you know in the description if you guys can subscribe to hindi chess base india and follow nikhilesh there uh, would be wonderful this is sagar shah signing off hope you enjoyed this analysis video